Hey, it's Wabbit. Good to be back with you. I do hope this finds you well. All right, uh, going to... Let me just hit play first. All right, so what I have going on here is taking advantage of the LFO uh, in the Oxy to send to the Roland S1. And what I want to do in this video is at a very high level talk about using the LFO in the Oxy. Now, I'm using the Roland S1 just for the, this example. However, I believe that if you just take the basic concepts that I will talk about in this video, you should, in theory, be able to apply it to other gear and possibly other, uh, whether it's iOS app or even potentially a software. I haven't tested that out yet as well. Let me kind of get into some boring type talking stuff and then we'll get into uh, the tutorial. So again, this is high level. This is not going to be a video that is going to walk in depth over every single thing related to LFO, even the devices itself. There is this understanding that you have some experience with the Oxy. And if you potentially are on the fence and looking to get this, this is not my job to try and persuade you. I am not an influencer. There are plenty of other content that's out there if you're looking for trying to make a decision. So please do not base your decision on this video if you're on the fence. I'm just assuming you have this gear. Potentially you may not be sure how to use it. Maybe you want to kind of have a video, kind of a walkthrough. And then... More importantly, it's upon you and I to learn our gear. So again, I'm going to give the basics. I will touch upon a few things. I'm not going to, because part of it, to be honest with you, I am not a subject matter expert in the area of LFOs. I only know a little bit to be dangerous. So if there are things that I say that are incorrect, I lean on those of you who are more experienced because I don't want to mislead. Again, that's why I'm keeping this super high level. These devices have been provided to me by my full-time job. Uh, Oxy or Roland are not aware of this video, nor do they have any say in the content before this is being released. All right, with that being said, let's talk about uh, what you really need to do before you can make this work. And at the core is you need to kind of know what are the CC parameters or values in your device to basically get this to talk. Now, one way of doing it is going to the manual. Basically, you would go to the website for, in this particular case, the S1, and you would find what should be called the MIDI implementation chart. Every manufacturer is going to be different how they present it for you. If I'm not mistaken, I think there's a separate PDF file that actually has the implementation chart for Roland devices, or it may be at the end of the manual. So that's something you have to kind of figure out. Now, I'm not going to go through that process because basically I would just be pulling up a screenshot. You can go to the website as well, or perhaps you have the manual and you can use that to find the parameters that you want to control because most devices have a CC value attached to, so in this particular case, I'm going to focus on the filter here on the S1. Now, there's a nice little trick that the Oxy has if you don't want to use the manual. And that's what I want to demonstrate for you. Now, in this particular case, I'm using MIDI to connect both devices. So basically, in this setting, I have MIDI out going to MIDI in. However, what I need to do is bring MIDI in from the S1 into the Oxy. So what I'm going to do is switch that up here shortly, and then I'm just going to in post, you know, cut that part out. So when I come back, you'll see this has been switched. Okay, so now I have the MIDI out going into the MIDI in of the Oxy. And what I'm going to also do is zoom in on this window screen so you can kind of see what's going on. So let me make that adjustment as well too. Okay, hopefully you can see that a little bit better now. Okay, so what we want to do is go into the configuration, and we want to come down to system, and there's this MIDI monitor. Now, 
A couple things before I get into there. There's another way that you can do this. It's connecting your USB to your USB. So again, this has USB type C on the Oxy. Same thing here. So you would just basically take your USB C cable, plug into one end into the other. The other thing, and I did a little testing on this, and I just want to be transparent. When I was using the USB method, and again, I, I can't say that this is a known issue, just something that I saw, and I'm throwing it out there in case that you see it. When I was using the USB method, I was getting some freezing on the S1. Now, I can't say that happens on the devices. I don't know what the issue is. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to further pursue it. I'm just throwing it out there just in case you see that. I was like, that was kind of strange. I had to reset the unit. The other reason why I would US, excuse me, would use USB-C or USB, I should say, is when I show you this, this next screen, you're going to see kind of a constant, uh, it, you'll see what I'm saying. And I have not figured out a way to, in MIDI mode, turn that off. It's not a big deal. But when you're trying to find the parameter, you have to really pay attention. So in USB mode, I'm able to switch it to USB in the Roland. And then I don't see that constant. Again, you'll, you'll see the message here in a minute. So that allows me as I make a change on the S1, I can see just the parameter without it, you know, having to quickly glance. So this is what I'm talking about. This is the MIDI monitor, MIDI monitor TRS. It says Active Sense. Now, again, I'll throw this to those of you who probably know this area. If there is a solution here that I can change, because I went through all the parameters in the settings menu in the S1 to not have this constant thing coming up, and I could not find that out. So if you know that, please share that down below. That would be very helpful. All right, so... I'm going to turn a knob value on. You can't see it right now in, in camera because I'm focused on here. But as I turn a knob value, pay attention, you'll briefly see that CC value pop up. And that's what I'm referring to. When you turn it, you have to quickly catch, catch it. Otherwise, you kind of miss it. And if I try and scroll back, because this thing is, is active, I don't have the option to catch it because it's constantly sending something. So let me switch over to USB cable and show you what I'm referring to. Okay, so now I've connected the USB cable in here. The other thing I did in the S1 is I went into menu under sync and I changed it to USB instead of auto. Uh, so then if I come back, well, you couldn't see that part. Apologies, that's off camera, but I, I made that change in the S1. So back in the Oxy, go back to MIDI monitor, now there's nothing here, and when I change a knob on the S1, you can see the number. So that's what I wanted to show you. All right, so since we're here, let's just go ahead and leave it in USB mode just so you can kind of capture the information. And as I change now, it does disappear, but at least you can see what it is. And I can just basically, I'm rotating the, I'm just going to rotate the filter knob for this example. So it gives you the, the data here. This is coming off of USB channel 1 which the Roland is on, the CC value for filter is 74, and then you see on the right-hand side the range. So I can go all the way down to 1 or 127. But for this particular purpose, we want to know what is the value of the filter, and it's 74. That's really all we need to know. Obviously, assuming we have our channel set up correctly, and that's how you can kind of get the information from your device if you don't want to get the manual. So this is a very nice feature that is, and I think this came in a firmware update. Don't I don't think this came initially, and I don't remember what firmware update this was put in. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe. And that's just another example of really the great work that the developer does. But again, that's not what this is about. All right, so now that we have that information, I'm going to switch back over to MIDI just because I want to use that versus USB so give me a second, and I'll switch that back over. Okay, so I'm back. I've got everything switched back over. I now have MIDI coming out to MIDI in via TRS. Um, and then I also, in the Roland, changed my MIDI sync to back to MIDI. 
All right, so on the Oxy, again, we have four sequencers that we can use. Each sequencer has two LFOs. So there's LFO one of two, and there's LFO two of two. And basically, again, I'm just going to go very high level. We're on LFO one for sequencer one. Um, you have different waves that you can use. I'm going to leave you to look at the manual to either know what those are or you probably know what these are. We've got tri, uh, tri triangle square, um, S slash H. We can ramp up. We can fall. Sine wave, line, gated, noise. And then there's about 14 different waves. Now, what those are, I don't know. I just basically tweak these and listen, use my ears. But again, if you want to know the details, the manual, I believe, can explain that. Then you've got your rate. So I can go as slow as 16 bars to have the LFO go. And that, again, super, super slow. Stops at 164th. And then you've got these 1 through 128. I don't really use any of these type of things. I really focus on here. So again, I defer, defer you to the manual in terms of additional details on that. But I'm just going to leave this at one bar for now. Then you have your LFO amount. So I can basically have nothing off all the way to 100. Now, notice here on the right-hand side, it says internal destination. So without getting too into the weeds, the LFO that you can use it to send internally to a value in the Oxy, that's for a whole other video. When I push this button down, it basically is saying send it to an external source, which is what we're doing here. So notice I have this CC value at 74. Now I'm going to push down on the wave here because with the Oxy, for those of you who know, that means there's other settings behind here. When I push the encoder, I have retrig. I can turn that off or on. I have phase, a percentage, and then I've got offset. Again, I don't get into that kind of stuff. I leave it up to you. If you understand that stuff, you know it. If not, please refer to the manual. Now, this one here, if I turn the knob, then I've got the option to select the destinations that I want to send it to. If I come all the way up to the top, you've got these different options. Channel press, program change, after touch, pitch bend, completely turn it off. And then you've got C, excuse me, CC0 all the way through 127. Some of these are already kind of like what these should be kind of default based on kind of a standard. But again, as I mentioned, when we found that value in the MIDI monitor, 74, and we're good to go. And it'll just kind of pop back out to the screen. And then that's where you kind of heard. So again, typically, if I didn't have this turned on, I would have to manually turn this. And that's really the purpose of LFO it kind of gives you the ability to kind of automate that for you without having to turn it. And then you just kind of play around with it. And that's what I was playing to you. I can turn the amount. As you can hear, they're very minimal. And then we can turn this up. So again, essentially you have two LFOs and I come to LFO two do the exact same thing and have it marked to a second parameter on this track for this sequencer. And then for whatever reason I needed, you know, additional LFOs, I would just go to, let's say, sequencer two. And as you know, so for example, I've got sequencer one set to a mono track. I can make four mono tracks if I want and each, again, have their own, have two LFOs. So in theory... If you wanted to go crazy with it, you could have eight LFOs to send to your device if you need that. Now, there is a way that you can use modulation on your LFO, but for the purpose of this video, I want to focus just on LFO. I'm not going to talk about that here. Perhaps I'll do that in another video down the road, or you can go explore on your own if you're familiar with that, but you have the option to do that. Basically, I just wanted to cover what you need to know to get the value because, again, that's important. So, again, your manual, or you can use the MIDI monitor in here to find that. And then once you've got that parameter, 
you now know where you need to go to plug that in. You know that you have two LFOs per sequencer. You've got various options that you can adjust and change. And then you can just play with it. So again, whether or not you just need one LFO or potentially eight, depending on how you want to configure things, go explore now. Go try it out. Practice it. If you run across a situation where something's not making sense, you can now go to the manual and take a look at that particular section. Or that's where you can jump online. Again, the Discord group for the Oxy. There are a lot of very helpful people in the community. Once again, this is an area that I just kind of understand the high-level stuff. I am not that person that is going to be able to be the best resource for you. My job really here was to keep that high level to show you how to find the information, where do you go to put that in, and then what can you do with your, your basic options. Now, with that knowledge, hey, go have fun. Thank you for your time. I really do hope something in here helped you out. Get out there. Have as much fun as possible. Stay safe. Keep your head on a swivel. And I do hope to catch you in another video. Until then, keep jamming.